Okay, in this video we'll take a look at a couple more uses of volumes of revolution and in particular the disk method. And what we're going to look at is this. Uh, you may remember from your geometry days down here, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now if you're like most people, you were just given that formula and told that it works. But suppose you wanted to uh, derive this formula to show where it comes from. And you can actually use volumes of revolution to do this, so let's just do that real quick. Now to start with, just a reminder, uh, the volume of revolution around the x-axis is equal to the integral of pi times f of x squared dx. And if you need to, watch the previous video and it will show you where this formula came from. But we will use this to find the volume of a sphere. Now to start with, you have to think of what would it take to get a sphere. And what you'll do is start with a semicircle. So put a semicircle on an axis. Uh, and if we did this, um, it will go from say so starting at zero, and let's assume the radius of this thing would be r. So I'll go to a radius of r over here, and then uh, I've got a radius of negative r going this way. So from r to negative r. Now you need a formula, you need some f of x, so looking at this semicircle, just a reminder that the formula for the area of a circle centered at the origin would be x squared plus y squared would be equal to r squared. Now you want to solve this thing for y, so move the x squared over and you'd get y squared would be equal to r squared minus x squared and then take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give you y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now normally you'd have a plus or minus here, but we just want the top half of the circle, so we'll just stay with plus. So this is going to be your f of x. So the function of x will just be equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. So in a sense, that's actually kind of the hard part of the problem. You've got that. Now again, if you take this semicircle and roll it around the axis, then you'll, it will sweep out a sphere, and that sphere will look something like this. Now inside this thing, just a reminder, you've got, starting with individual rectangles, suppose you have one that looked like this. Uh, we'll go up to here, and across like this, and down like this. So this would be one rectangle. Now the height of that rectangle is f of x, and the thickness of that rectangle would be dx. But if you took this rectangle and rolled it around the axis, it would sweep out a disk, just like it did in the previous video. So we'll do that real quickly. It'll sweep out a disk that looks something like this. Uh, then you go over here, and then here's the other part of it. And we'll put some lines on here just so it kind of stands out. But Okay, but here would be a disk inside this thing that goes like that. So uh, there's a single disk. And again, if you added up all the disks in there, you'd have one. So that's where this comes from, pi times f of x squared. So the volume of a single disk would be the radius of the base times dx. So with that now, let's go ahead and solve this thing. Now what we're going to do is integrate it from uh, negative r straight across like this to r. So when you set up your formula, it'll just be the volume would be equal to the integral from negative r to r of pi times f of x, but f of x is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared, and then that entire thing is squared dx. So you've got that. Now the first step is just go ahead and I'm going to, I'll move the pi to the outside, so I've got the constant pi times the integral from negative r to r. And the first thing to do is just square this thing. Well, what happens is the square and the square root cancel out, and that just leaves you with r squared minus x squared dx. We have to think of this as being, uh, in these problems, um, x is the variable, so you can treat r as a constant. So the volume would be equal to pi. And again, treating that as a constant, the antiderivative of that would just be r squared times x. So find the antiderivative. 
and this will become r squared, and just add an x, minus, and the antiderivative of this one would be x cubed divided by 3, and you're going to evaluate that from negative r to a positive r. And from here on out, it's just uh, plain old integrals that you've always done. So first of all, uh, you've got pi times, uh, plug in the, everywhere you've got an x, plug in an r. So you'd have r squared, and in place of this x, put an r, minus, and then put an r here, r cubed divided by 3, we'll put parentheses around this one, minus, now, everywhere you've got an x, plug in a negative r. So this would be r squared times negative r minus a negative r cubed divided by 3. And then we'll put that in parentheses and put the whole thing in brackets. Okay, now it's just a matter of simplifying that. So what this is going to give you, uh, the volume would be equal to pi then you've got, now r squared times r would be r cubed minus r cubed divided by 3, then minus, this would be negative r cubed, and then uh, this would be negative, two negatives make a positive, this would be plus r cubed divided by 3. Okay, now in the next step, um, okay, think of this as being 3r, put both these over 3, you'd have 3r cubed, and I think we'll just go ahead and put that step in here, so you'll have 3r cubed divided by 3, divided by 3, so put both of those over 3, and then do the same thing, multiply this one by 3 over 3, and you'd have this. So you've got everything divided by 3. Well, what that gives you is pi, then 3 minus 1 would be 2r cubed divided by 3, minus, and this one, negative 3 plus 1 would be minus 2r cubed divided by 3. And then finally you can put those together so that the volume would be pi. Now two negatives make a positive, so this will turn into 4r cubed divided by 3. And that gives you your final answer. Uh, you can move four-thirds out in front. So four-thirds pi r cubed. And what that would be, that's going to be the formula for the volume of a sphere. Again, let's take a look back up at the top. It really comes down to, uh, at the very beginning, start with a semicircle. And just remember uh, that the formula for a full circle would be x squared plus y squared is r squared. So you use that to get your uh, function of x. And then it's just a matter of plugging into the formula and off you go. So there's a use uh, for volume of sphere and particularly the disk method to use it to prove some of the formulas that you ran across in geometry.